Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share a few words by Oswald Chambers. The first one is titled, The Greatest Source of Power. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. John 14, verse 13. Am I fulfilling this ministry of intercession deep within the hidden recesses of my life? There is no trap nor any danger at all of being deceived or of showing pride in true intercession. It is a hidden ministry that brings forth fruit through which the Father is glorified. Am I allowing my spiritual life to waste away or am I focused bringing everything to one central point, the atonement of my Lord? Is Jesus Christ more and more dominating every interest of my life? If the central point or the most powerful influence of my life is the atonement of the Lord, then every aspect of my life will bear fruit for Him. However, I must take the time to realize what this central point of power is. Am I willing to give one minute out of every hour to concentrate on it? If you abide in me, that is, if you continue to act and think and work from that central point, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. John 15 verse 7 Am I abiding? Am I taking the time to abide? What is the greatest source of power in my life? Is it my work, service, and sacrifices for others, or is it my striving to work for God? It should be none of these. What ought to exert the greatest power in my life is the atonement of the Lord. It is not what, or sorry, it is not on what we spend the greatest amount of time that molds us the most, but whatever exerts the most power over us. We must make a determination to limit and concentrate our desires and interests on the atonement by the cross of Christ. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. The disciple who abides in Jesus is the will of God and what appears to be his free choices are actually God's foreordained decrees. Is this mysterious? Does it appear to contradict sound logic or seem totally absurd? Yes, but what a glorious truth it is to a saint of God. And that's the end of the first word, and the second one is titled, What's Next to Do? If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. John 13, verse 17 Be determined to know more than others. If you yourself do not cut the lines that tie you to the dock, God will have to use a storm to sever them and to send you out to sea. Put everything in your life afloat upon God going out to sea on the great swelling tide of His purpose, and your eyes will be opened. If you believe in Jesus, you are not to spend all your time in the calm waters just inside the harbor, full of joy, but always tied to the dock. You have to get out past the harbor into the great depths of God and begin to know things for yourself. Begin to have spiritual discernment. When you know that you should do something and you do it, immediately you know more. Examine where you have become sluggish, where you began losing interest spiritually, and you will find that it goes back to a point where you did not do something you knew you should do. You did not do it because... There seemed to be no immediate call to do it, but now you have no insight or discernment, 
and at a time of crisis you are spiritually distracted instead of spiritually self-controlled. It is a dangerous thing to refuse to continue learning and knowing more. The counterfeit of obedience is a state of mind in which you create your own opportunities to sacrifice yourself, and your zeal and enthusiasm are mistaken for discernment. It is easier to sacrifice yourself than to fulfill your spiritual destiny, which is stated in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. It is much better to fulfill the purpose of God in your life by discerning His will than it is to perform great acts of self-sacrifice. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15, verse 22 Beware of paying attention or going back to what you once were. When God wants you to be something that you have never been. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know. John 7, verse 17. And that's the end of the second word. And the last word is titled, Then what's next to do? Everyone who asks, receives. Luke 11, verse 10. Ask, if you have not received. There is nothing more difficult than asking. We will have yearnings and desires for certain things, and even suffer as a result of their going unfulfilled, but not until we are at the limit of desperation will we ask. It is the sense of not being spiritually real that causes us to ask. Have you ever asked out of the depths of your total insufficiency and poverty? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. James 1 verse 5 But be sure that you do lack wisdom before you ask. You cannot bring yourself to the point of spiritual reality any time you choose. The best thing to do once you realize you are not spiritually real, is to ask God for the Holy Spirit, basing your request on the promise of Jesus Christ. Luke 11, verse 13. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes everything that Jesus did for you real in your life. Everyone who asks, receives. This does not mean that you will not get if you do not ask, but it means that until you come to the point of asking, you will not receive from God. Matthew 5 verse 45 To be able to receive means that you have come, you have to come into the relationship of a child of God, and then you comprehend and appreciate mentally, morally, and with spiritual understanding that these things come from God. If any of you lacks wisdom, if you realize that you are lacking, it is because you have come in contact with spiritual reality. Do not put the blinders of reason on again. The word ask actually means beg. Some people are poor enough to be interested in their poverty, and some of us are poor enough spiritually, to show our interest. Yet we will never receive if we ask with a certain result in mind, because we are asking out of our lust, not out of our poverty. A pauper does not ask out of any reason other than the completely hopeless and painful condition of his poverty. He is not ashamed to beg, Blessed are the paupers in spirit. Matthew 5, verse 3. And that is the end of these words. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.